There you are, everybody. So happy to see you. Welcome to the Thursday edition of KSRO's Ask the Expert. I'm your host, Robin Berardini, with Michelle Marquez as the engineer producer over there. And it is for Dr. Walter Tom from Dr. Tom Cosmetic Surgery, drtomcosmetic.com. Let's stay young together. He has offices in Santa Rosa, Napa, Maui. Remember them at 707-542-8346. And by you and the wonderful team that he has, you guys voted him seven years in a row best cosmetic surgeon and recently voted best cosmetic surgeon in a North Bay by the Bohemian today it's so exciting because we know you guys have been waiting for this a personal experience on the air we're going to represent with you live in studio with Dr. Tom and us Acacia welcome both of you yay hooray yay. Robin thank you for that introduction <laughs> and I'm super excited super stoked because we have one of our one of my favorite patients here today, Acacia. How are you, Acacia? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Thank Adorable. you. Adorable. Thank you for having Yeah, right. Yeah, Adorable. We're, we're videotaping this, just so if you want to know, right? We're, oh, we're yes. hoping to have this on you, uh, on everything, KSRO, YouTube, and our uh, Dr. Tom Cosmetic uh, website. Uh, and um, it's we're, I'm going to dub it the Beauty and the Beast. Oh, no, come on. Okay, give me a break. We, give me a break. But come I'm so on, brother. I'm so happy to have Acacia here uh, to just sort of share her experience. Robin, well, um, Acacia has been... Uh, We've been, uh, we have had a uh, professional relationship now for two years. Have I you? Think. And but I'm going to let you kind of lead the well, way and get and to know Acacia. I would love that because Acacia, number one, adorable. And thank you for being brave enough to be in here with all of us. We appreciate that and sharing your experience. Where are you from? I'm from Humboldt originally. Are you? Yeah. Are my, you? my parents met in Chicago. Did they? They had had enough of the city. They um, decided to, well, my dad had been homesteading in California for a couple years. Nice. Went back to Chicago and met my mom and convinced her to come back with him. Match and it maker. didn't take much convincing for her to leave Chicago winters behind. I think Dr. Tom may have something in common with you as far as you're from, from Detroit. From the Midwest. <laughs> yeah. My grandparents live in Chicago. So oh, maybe nice. that's why I like Acacia so much. She's yeah. a Midwest girl. There I like that. Yeah. So did you grow up there in Humboldt? I did. Yeah. You did? I um, spent the majority of my time there. I moved to Santa Rosa to go to dental hygiene school. Ah. And I've also you know, wanted to explore esthetician work and really? medical assisting work. So I love anything to do with the head and neck region and cosmetics and all that fun stuff. So, yeah. Well, as we get into kind of understanding who you are and explaining your uh, patient experience with Dr. Tom, um, may we ask how old you are? Is that fair? 42. Okay, great. That's fair because, you know, um, we span the globe here. I mean, you, Dr. Tom, you, you go from demographic to demographic to demographic. Absolutely. Right, and right, right. It, it, I just, you saw me smirking a little bit because yeah, my did. kid's age. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you but you love, never know it. Except she listens to me versus <laughs> my kids, okay? She actually, you Thank you for listening to me. <laughs> Thank course, you. I appreciate course. that, Acacia. <laughs> well, do you have any? And so you are right now. What are you practicing as a career? Uh, the dental hygiene. Dental hygiene. Are yeah, you? but I get distracted when I look at skin. So sometimes the conversation <laughs> veers towards, "Are you using retinol?" So it's a I, twofer. Yeah, I pick Dr. Tom's brain a lot about you know the science behind what he does and the chemistry behind the products that he recommends. And I love sharing that with my patients because mm -hmm. I do have a mm -hmm. lot of opportunity to chit chat. And mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. it's a one-way conversation because they can't <laughs> respond. But right, we're like, oh, yeah. right, one of those, right, right, right. They right. really appreciate getting some insight on what I've had done. And right. I'm happy to share what I've had done with anybody who's sure. looking to, you know, improve melasma after pregnancy. Uh -huh. And that done, is yeah. kind of the dark spots is mm -hmm. that, you know, yeah. some women get that yeah. and they're huge patches. Were you uh, encumbered I with that? I never had melasma, yeah. thankfully, but, yeah. you know, never say never. It could never happen. say never. Right. And yeah. that would be the IPL if we had something like that. Well, actually that. not. It's interesting. So, yeah, thank you. Um, Acacia's uh, really our first real guest uh, here. And I didn't really want to have a two structure so it could kind of go free floating. And so you've thrown me a curveball because you started talking about something you have you have no issues with. Yeah. And that's that's melasma. So I'll, I'll since just, you brought it up, we, I'll, can I'll we give just you do real quick, and then we'll jump into. Thank you. So I melasma, we call it the mask of pregnancy, and uh, it 
seems to occur after pregnancy. We uh, see it in all different ethnic types, but it looks like brownish um, discoloration that patches that go basically from the temple area down the jawline to the other side. It can sometimes be in the forehead. And actually, uh, the best treatments for that is medical products, uh, in my opinion. That would be with hydroquinones on our Abaji line with Retin-A. Uh, sometimes some peels can help, but specifically IPL is not what we would treat it with. Mm. Uh, we would treat it more with products. So okay. if I may, well, we're going to move on from that. Please. Let's talk more about what you've done, not so much what you consult your patients yeah. on. Okay? Yeah. You wear some more yeah. from, yeah. Yeah. More yeah. from you yeah. as, as the patient and what we've done for you. Yeah. Well, how, did you mo- how did you find Dr. Tom and um, what was the experience of potentially moving forward with some of your procedures? I had been... Um, you know, searching around the internet, and it looked like one of the top searches. So I, I definitely paid attention to that, and the office looked beautiful and professional. So that's always a welcoming sign. And meeting Dr. Tom was great. He's just so warm, so friendly, and so incredibly thorough in his diagnostic assessment. What did um, you find um, good about it? I mean, what, what, what were the highlights for you? I mean, what took, stood out? Yeah, he took so many pictures from so many uh, angles mm-hmm. and really zeroed in on a lot of things um, sure. that I had been noticing. And he's so detail-oriented. Um, I, I felt like he saw every little thing that that's his job. He possibly could, right, yeah. Right. And, and then you, and, after feeding that back, then you can make your own decisions on what it is good and right for you? Right? Yes. 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 Okay. He definitely goes above and beyond. I've I've gone to different places in the past, and this was by far the most thorough consultation mm-hmm. I had ever experienced. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I appreciated that because he didn't have to go that in depth, but he does because he loves what he does. Right. And how long was that initial kind of meeting and greeting? He packs it into one hour. He's that efficient. Right. We, yeah. we spend about an hour. Yeah. And so somebody might, if they're watching the video, say, well, no wonder we spent an hour with her. Look how beautiful she is, right? Uh, we actually do that with all our patients. And one of the reasons that I thought about inviting Acacia here mm-hmm was because, and it's okay if we talk about these things, right, Acacia? Oh, of course, okay. of course. So when she first came, of course, she's you know beautiful young lady, and she came to me about her upper eyelids, okay. thinking possibly that she needed to have surgery on her, okay. on her upper eyelids, sure. what we call an upper blepharoplasty, mm-hmm. one of my favorite procedures to perform. But as I evaluated uh, Acacia, uh, I was a little bit taken aback by what her concern was, and that's- In what uh, way? Because of you, you're you're looking at her thinking, okay, what does she really need? Maybe some skincare, maybe this or that. You certainly would not, at least initially, have thought that. But part of our job is help to protect the patient from their overcritical eye. Boy, and, is that you know and, that? Can we just say, state that again? Because I think that's really huge. You know, we're looking in a you know magnifying glass, and we're seeing all these little you know nips and tucks we think need to happen so right. having an objective point of view right. and kind so, of guiding so that's us, our job we, we of right? course want to do what the patient was requesting but we also want to guide them and educate them and what's been you can tell just by the way that acacia's speaking that she's scientific in her banner and in her diagnosis you can tell that she is an analyzer uh, and so uh, that's important to do so acacia do you remember what i told you when you were talking and i you were asking me about having maybe your upper eyelid surgery yeah you you said we should try some alternative approaches first and you said if i really wanted it down the road we could consider it but you felt that there was better options that would preserve the draping of the face so that i didn't look too stretched or too taut right it's it's interesting i I remember specifically the conversation with you acacia that's the reason that i requested and thank you for coming on the show with us but when uh when uh, when i looked at you i if you can remember, I said you have a very you have a very exotic look, okay. And what nationalities are you? Uh, Irish, English, and Scots. Okay, so Northern. you know we tend not to think of that as exotic. <laughs> right. Yeah. And oh, do you remember what celebrity I mentioned when Catherine Zeta Jones? Exactly. Oh, I said. What a compliment. I said you're like not that you necessarily look like her, but you're like Catherine Zeta Jones. She played um, the heroine in Zorro, right? And she plays these very ethnic kind of uh, exotic, I should say, not ethnic, but exotic looks. And she's Welsh, right? She's she's UK from the United Kingdom. And I had mentioned that about 
about you, and my concern was that if we went ahead and did surgery on you, that we would make you look more generic. And you had this very oh. beautiful, unique look, uh, ex- oh, nice described as exotic and I think my daughter is like that and um, and I didn't want to change that on you so that was one of the reasons that we went in another direction so I know we've done a lot of oh Robin has a question how did you feel when he said that to you I absolutely hung on his every word because I knew that he knew best and Uh, you know some days your face is a little puffy and things change from day to day so so it wasn't like an affront it was like oh okay information okay yeah i was totally open to the possibilities and yeah he had great suggestions especially the prp um platelet rich plasma that we did above the eyebrow bone i think that added a lot of fullness and encouraged my own body to you know stimulate collagen and fibroblasts to kind of lift the eyebrows in a more natural way so the P, so the mic is it microneedling PRP that we're talking about, Doctor uh, Tom? This is a little different. So what okay, Robin's help, asking help. about is microneedling PRP, and that's for skin texture. And okay. I don't know that have you had that done with our staff yet? I I don't know if I had the needling, but okay. I remember we mixed some some platelet rich plasma Correct. and injected okay. it. Okay, so yeah. uh, microneedling is where we put a topical, and we did not do this for acacia, okay. but where you put a topical anesthetic on the face, and then we have a handpiece that has tiny little needles and it creates little tunnels in the skin. Mm-hmm. It's uh, and then we put your own platelet rich plasma, which is what I call the paramedics of the body. We draw your blood off, spin it down, we draw off this one. Per- portion of your serum and put it on the skin, it goes down into the tunnels and helps to rejuvenate the skin. Mm. And uh, microneedling with PRP or PRF, which is the activated form, platelet-rich fibrin, actually helps with smooth uh, smoothing the text smoothening out smoothening, smoothening, a technical term. smoothening <laughs> a medical term. out the <laughs> texture of the skin uh, and but that's not really where I we needed to go with you because you also mm-hmm. you're you are a renaissance woman uh, you used to model when you were younger you, uh, you're an esthetician you are a medical well, thanks assistant. to you I can model a few more <laughs> a few more years <laughs> thank you so and also you are a dental hygienist so wow. you know, I know that you're you're great at all of those the what Acacia had come to see me for were her eyes. And so uh, we talked about in previous shows, Robin, about the eyes being the windows to the soul. And then I talked to people about your eyes being a window, Acacia. And I don't know if you remember us having that conversation. So um, the concern that she had was the mm-hmm. blinds coming down from above and feeling like maybe it was puffier or lowering and, and not making her eyes as bright. Mm-hmm. So one of the first things we had talked about uh, was maybe a little Botox or Dysport to get in between the eyes and on the side of the eyes to relax the muscles around the eye to open up your eyes more. Uh, and again wanting to keep that exotic very unique beautiful look that you have not Mm. making you look generic okay generic pretty we wanted you to maintain who you were so that's what we did and then um, I had explained to you that we can either use filler or we can use the PRP or PRF if you described and where we place it underneath the eyebrow and and think about it as if for those who are at home and listening if you kind of just grab your eyebrow on the side Mm. and you just pull it forward meaning like you're adding some volume there (laughs) it forward okay. your eyelid pulls up. up and that's really what it all we needed for acacia was just a few millimeters of change so you like that prf gel and then i think we also put some underneath your eyes correct yeah we did it really helped with the hollowness that i was getting underneath my oh. eyes i just tend to lose weight quickly and always have a kind of hollowed out area there and it really filled it up and i feel like it's still very full you know a year later so right. it's like the gift that keeps on giving, so to speak. Is that what you're noticing? Yeah, it stimulates Acacia? your body to, you know, rejuvenate itself and produce more collagen and just brings awareness to that part of the body. It gets it to wake up know, wake, wake up, up and, more collagen yeah. deposition there and um michelle uh, marquez who's a little under the weather so she's not talking on mic today but she w- and i were looking at each other and she was kind of smirking at myself as acacia's talking about you know the under eye hollow and i'm thinking mm-hmm. mine looked like the grand canyons compared to her so maybe i don't want this video to go on youtube i think i might i think You're i so might pull funny. that one off here is it that, like that you know the cobbler and the cobbler's kids type yeah, of deal you know i, I don't I mean? know she looks 
fantastic. She does. But I, again, what you see, um, Acacia, because this is a passion of yours, beauty is a passion of yours, and you're looking at that, and, and as you know, part of my job is to keep you from being too critical of yourself. Having said that, it's what's great because you're doing things, uh, what some people might say is a little early, like what does she need? And, and people might say that, right. is that by stepping in now, it's important to you, your self-image is important to you, that doing these little tweaks, these are little tweaks, we've done nothing surgical at all on you over a two year period of time, and we've helped to soften your eyes, open them up more, she has beautiful eyes, and Gorgeous. all of this is done <laughs> non-surgically. Were you surprised? Were you surprised when he offered these um, possible other suggestions or considerations with what you'd gone in thinking you wanted eyelid surgery? That anything could possibly be done? You know, I just knew he had access to the best of the best, and I was excited to see what he mm -hmm. was going to recommend. And I mm -hmm. knew it'd be great. Mm -hmm. They do great work, and I wholeheartedly trust, you know, his vision. Mm -hmm. And I think I said that to you I, on my 40th birthday. I said, I just want to see your vision. Go ahead, I'm your canvas, you know. Guinea bunny. Right, it was really, yeah. that's actually, that's really nice. And it's it a two-way nice. street. It's not It's not the old days where the doctor would just tell you what to do. You're getting input. But we also have to fight from uh, patients who sort of get their Google MD and they, you know, think, oh, this is what I need. Because I will tell you, going through medical school, every disease that I studied, I thought I had, right? Oh, sure. So you, it, it really is, you have to be <laughs> careful with that. Um, as we're, I can't believe we're already halfway through our show here, Acacia, but yeah. of the treatments that we have done for you, you mentioned the PRF or the PRP around the eyes, which mm -hmm. helped to open up your eyes uh, and to avoid surgery for you in yes. terms of an upper eyelid surgery. What other treatments do, have we done for you that you kind of stand out and you say, this really made a difference for me? Well, you always um, were great about suggesting filling the temple area, which is a really forgotten spot. You know, I, I think we, we tend to say, just fill up my cheeks, fill up my lips. Mm -hmm. But we forget that the, the whole face needs to look balanced. Okay. And if you're not filling in hollowed areas like the temples, you know, you're you're very full in the mid range of the face mm -hmm. and then you have this hollowed scalloped kind of look at it. On the side of the eyes. Yeah. Okay. So All these right. little spots that you suggested filling out gave the overall impression of a more rounded, youthful look instead of a more extreme angular kind of shape. I would say thank you for saying that and seeing that vision, um, Acacia. So Acacia, to describe her, is, is slender, okay? She's slender and she's also, sorry Acacia, you're getting older. Yeah, you're <laughs> she is not, stop that. How old are you? Is she 42? She's Thanks 42. to you, I'm okay, reversing yeah. an okay, age. Okay, you're older. So we know we lose volume in our face and that happens and one of the areas is in the temple area uh, and because you're slender uh, uh, then also that accentuates that mm -hmm. so you get hollowed in the temple area and for those who are listening uh, I'll, sometimes I'll have patients in a funny way they'll say yeah I look like Skeletor they'll they'll make a comment of how they look skeletal and even when you're young like you are Acacia even when you're young like you if we can make you look healthy that translates into vibrant more youthful more attractive and so even at a young age if we think about what can I do to make myself look healthy that really makes a big difference so you've right. noticed a difference what did we um, inject in that temple area I know we've done a couple of different things for you uh, as new products come out new technologies what stands out for you Boy, to remember what filler we placed in the temples was it Juvederm? Okay, so uh, a filler that's not so much the brand name, but oh, okay. uh, so we, okay. we we placed filler in there yeah. initially, yeah. a little bit of filler, uh, and then anything else that we did in that area? Um, well, we placed the Italian threads that was kind of in that area, oh, but a different procedure. Tell. Right, so we had yes. exactly so. Um, so Acacia also uh, came in and we did some threads. Okay, so it's not a facelift, but it is a pulling up of the skin. And, and especially when you're younger and you're just starting to see these changes, you're a really great candidate for that, okay? If you, if you like my age and you have a really heavy jowls, then surgery is really gonna be the way to go in terms of what you need. You, know, you need a facelift, we're happy to make that referral we don't do them in the office we we kind of specialize more in the non-invasive uh, but one of the things uh, that you didn't mention was we used renuva or the uh, fat the uh, the fat what I call fat, fat off the shelf, shelf which is okay. the uh, 
it's cadaver fat, but basically it's fat that we take. It's the matrix which holds fat injected into the body. And what happens is your body kind of breaks away at this, this uh, matrix over time, but it, the matrix stimulates your own stem cells to place your own fat into this matrix, okay? Do you remember that? Trying to remember yeah, all the different things. Uh -huh. It's okay. fascinating. Okay, though. so so that's what we did for you, and that actually goes right along with what you do in the dental world. Because I have some periodontal work done, and what do they often do with that? They have to put bone grafts in there, right? Yeah, we have to replace a bone. We place a bone matrix to, ah. and of course, the body takes that bone matrix and runs with it and creates a new, healthy, dense bone, and, and you can put an implant into that bone later on. So it secures the anchor very similar you know we're taking the fat perfect i love that getting See, the body to regenerate its own i mean i'm a big that's that's what i go for is stimulating the body to rejuvenate itself. stimulate its own healing properties right. yeah and did you find that in this particular procedure that was the same for you the yeah same? it gives a great lift does it yeah and yeah. you don't look like you've had anything done you just look like a rested version of yourself and rested yeah, yeah. no I one's think, ever thought I've had anything See, done. The, I, how about yeah. you never changed? That's the compliment. Yeah. You never change. Yeah. Right? Well, she's yeah. so young. <laughs> oh, <do>. look <laughs> she, looks, she looks great. <laughs> so it's interesting as you described it and you, and you once we kind of got right into the field that you're in now in the dental world, you just kind of it rolled off, rolled off your tongue. You know, you were just talking about how you, it's cadaver bone. You put it in there. It's a matrix. Your body, you said kind of, dip, you did say stem cells, but your own body stem cells start laying bone down in that area mm -hmm. and then now you can put an implant in there for you know, teeth replacement and so forth right. and that's what we're doing with that and so we did this for you uh acacia in the templar that's how much she trusts me she i say okay whatever you want but i have to be careful with that okay you have okay. to respect the patient's desires and i think they, you err on the side of being conservative and natural absolutely and I you're would, a good listener you know if you would definitely uh, it, Thank you, Acacia. If you were to see Acacia on the video here, you'd see how young she looks. We've been together professionally for two years now. You've been a patient of ours, and uh, and we've just sort of taken step by step. And what people might not know by putting the Renuva in the temple area, not only are we taking care of the so-called hollow that some people will notice on their face, but by increasing the volume there, it actually lifts the outer part of your eyebrow up. And I oh, remember um, communicating with you after we did that, and you you had made the comment about in the morning that you noticed how your eyes were more open and maybe the way you put on your makeup or whatever was you didn't need to do as much. Do you remember that? I'm not that skilled with my makeup. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, I don't believe a word of it. <laughs> and not only filling the temple area, uh, lifts up the eyebrow area but it actually lifts up the face where the face is a unit together okay. uh, and every part is inter interdependent upon it so what right. else did we do for you that you kind of stands out for you in terms of kind of well, giving you that wow i love to geek out over your lasers so i've i've had some ipl treatments to get rid of you know sun damage from all those summers oh and uh, it was quite amazing when i did my forearms um Oh, my goodness. left side where that's my driver's side obviously, right sure it sure really reacted to the laser and you could oh. just see the the sun damage come right to the surface wow. and within two weeks you know it was sloughing away and you have this dewy fresh supple light pink skin again and it's just awesome to see i mean mm -hmm. the technology we have available is so amazing you know it's truly amazing and then reminding ourselves to put the sunscreen on and dr tom you have some uh, compound products uh, in that area that you also have available on the uh, dr tom cosmetic.com website which is great and, and important to remember too right uh, and it's interesting i'm going to just take us uh, along that same pathway of what you were talking about acacia because uh somebody might look at uh at acacia we, we know we're doing our show today talking about our patient experience and it's more precise procedure oriented like oh you did you know what did you have done oh you had threads or oh you had the cadaver fat or you had filler you had the PRF or the PRP around the eyes Acacia took us to the skin okay. I just had a young lady who's in her 30s uh, who I had uh, done some injections on and I just sat down with her for a little bit and Bridie was who's filming us who's her medical assistant right now um, 
she uh, remembers this conversation. I said, you know, I want to just talk to you about a few things. I want to talk about your skin. And when I'm talking to you, I want you to know the things I'm going to recommend to you are the least expensive things that we do. Okay. And so we're going to talk about sun care, you know, skin Sun Skincare. protection, excuse me, that mm-hmm. Robin mentioned. Uh, talk about the different products that we carry. But then I was talking to her about what do you do for your skin. And we talked about hydrofacials. We talked about oh, peels, yeah. all those kind of things. And if you were to look at Acacia right now, Acacia, and I, and I need to let you speak to this, uh, but when you see her, oh, beautiful young lady, but really you may not even notice it, but it's her skin. Look how it amazing is. her skin looks, looks right? Look and good. that makes a big difference. So you lo- like the IPL. Was there anything else that you liked uh, in terms of your skin? Well, you turned me on to retinol, which, you know, I'd always heard about it, but I'd never really started using it consistently. Okay. And you started me off on the 0.5%, and it goes up to 1%. And I use it every other night because it is, you know, exfoliating a little bit. But it really just locks in the moisture. Your skin looks supple. The pore size shrinks. With the retin, then, with retin-A, along with the sloughing, all of that, those other things are benefits? Yeah, it's a, it's a, just a mild, you know, um, sloughing that you can see is happening. So it, you're getting the exfoliation, but it's also retaining so much natural dewiness and moisture. I, mean, I didn't know it was a twofer in that way, Acacia, right? Yeah, I didn't. It, I didn't. And you being a Northern European person, you're able to use it every other day and still yeah, be Yeah, I think effective. it's not recommended that you use it every day because it is a strong product. It is a strong product okay. and, and everybody can tolerate it differently. When I was younger, I could use it every day. I'm kind of going to about every other day now. My skin's a little bit thinner. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah. thank you, Acacia. I think that's really great. And um, I know we're coming uh, close to the end of our show and we haven't talked about all the things we need to talk about i need to well you're gonna have have to come back back on she's gonna have to come i would love to all right would you do us a favor since we are at ending it here and we kind of just want to have a wrap up with acacia acacia is a personal experience at uh the dr tom cosmetic surgery if you could get a little rundown that'd be great sure so um what i'm going to say is do what acacia does Okay, so she comes, she studies, she comes in, and she listens, and she realizes that we're a team. And I'm going to say that's probably the most important thing. We're a team. We make the decisions together. Take our time. Go step by step. I like it. I like it. If you're interested in getting in and getting your own consultation, remember the Dr. Tom Cosmetic Surgery, 707-542-8346, and drtomcosmetic.com, Facebook, Instagram, always super fun. Acacia, thank you so much for being here. Dr. Thank you Tom, for having me. always a pleasure. Thank Top you. of the hour news is next, and thank you, Michelle Marcus.